I think by now you probably have gotten, gotten my statement, so if there are any questions, why don't I, why don't I take them from you? Mayor, maybe you can address, um, sure. we got this question you after your statement, or shortly before your statement was released. Mm -hmm. Your former law partner, Barry Barnes, is listed as a co-partner in this deal on the application for the tax credit from the state. Um, can you talk about whether you or your aides have ever spoken to Mr. Barnes about this deal, whether his inclusion in the matter affected your decision on the, on the and, and I have not, okay. Uh, what I will say to you up until today was not aware. And I think he's not a, a developer from what I've been told, and that his interest it's like 0.1%, uh, like and there is no relationship between me uh, and the law firm at all. I, as you know, I severed my relationship in full uh, before I became mayor. So then why, Mayor, uh, did this project move from seventh in scoring to number two in the award? Uh, it was not, um, uh, as far as I'm aware, not seventh in scoring. What ended up happening, Ted, this project was ranked fairly high by the Texas Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, I think it was, well, fairly high uh, by, by them. Uh, this was the only project of, of, of all of those that were on the list when they went before the Texas Department of Housing and Community Development said that it would need gap funding. None of the other projects said that. All the other projects pretty much said that they had enough money to move forward without coming back to the city for funding. This one was the only one that indicated from the very beginning that gap funding would be needed. So that's consistent. So when it came back to the city of Houston, uh, well, and then we end up having additional dollars. So we put out a NOFA to everyone to let people know that we did have additional dollars. You could apply for it. Uh, so, for example, New Hope Housing, which there's not much conversation about in this conversation, New Hope Housing is one of the projects that is it's getting additional gap funding. The Huntington happens to be the other. And the reason why this one came and, and ranked higher is because, as you know from the very beginning since I've been in office, there's been this running issue between um, my administration and HUD about making sure that we put afford affordable housing developments all throughout the city of Houston, and specifically in opportunity districts. And for those of you who can remember years ago, there was a big battle about that. And so over the last pretty much six years, we have tried to spread these developments throughout the city of Houston, put them in quote unquote uh, opportunity districts, as I described them, but the one district where we have not placed many uh, affordable housing developments has been in District E. And I think the last one that we placed in District E, if I'm not mistaken, was 2016, several years ago. So we have placed affordable housing developments in pretty much throughout the, throughout the city of Houston, District E, I think the last one was in 2016. This was an opportunity to place another affordable housing project in quote unquote an opportunity district that happened to be in District E. Right now, we are in quite a number of conversations, for example, with her. I didn't want any issue that the city of Houston was not living up to the VCA uh, that we had signed with her, the volunteer, what you call it, volunteer compliance. compliance agreement, okay, and making sure that we were uh, placing these developments throughout the city of Houston in opportunity districts, this happened to be one. It also came with the full support of uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, uh, Dave Martin. That was the primary, the primary reason why this project uh, moved forward. This was an opportunity to do it. I think uh, it would bode well in our relationship with HUD. When you look at where we are placing these affordable housing developments, that not instead of concentrating them uh, in districts B, D, uh, H, I, J, and K, now you have projects that are being placed in, in uh, F, G, and E. And that's the, that was the primary reason. Well, why didn't it score better? 
in the city process, done by folks at the housing department who deal with these issues and HUD rules every day? With regards to uh, the Houston Housing Authority, when they evaluated these projects, all of these projects met the, uh, the minimum uh, requ the threshold. All of them, including this one here. This one was the only one from the very beginning that said it will require additional gap funding. And when you look at the Texas Department of Housing and Community Development, they made that, they made that statement then. Out of all of them, this was the one that was very uh, transparent in terms of their need. When it came back to the, to, to the city of Houston, and after we put out the NOVA, and many people then applied for this particular funding, and the staff comes forth with a recommendation. Number one, this is not an RFP, okay? They come back with a recommendation. I listened to them. We met several times, several times on this deal. And then uh, um, uh, Tom, Tom sent me an email on Friday with information in his email that he had not provided to the group meetings the two previous times. And it was at that point in time, uh, based on the email that he sent on Friday, two weeks after I made the decision, I asked the Chief Economic Development Officer, the Chief of Staff, uh, Tom, along with Arturo, separate and apart from me, to vet this project again, taking into account everything that Tom had laid out. And Tom was a part of the meetings. It is my understanding Tom made no objections. And I talked to him after the meeting. Tom made no objection. Sure did today, though, didn't he? Well, which I find puzzling. And let me just say this. I have stood by Tom McCaslin, as you all very well know, as the director of housing over the last several years. I have stood by Tom. When Tom tendered his resignation to me last year, the heat of the challenges with GLO, I said I would stand by you. I wanted to move this program forward. And Tom's tendering his resignation to me had nothing to do with the uh, city of Houston as a, a strong mayor. It had nothing to do with me. It had everything to do with the relationship between GLO and himself. And I stood by him then, okay? So quite frankly, I find, I find all of this puzzling. So he says that the NOFA was specifically created for this project and that it was a basically a predetermined process. What's your response to that? No, the NOFA was created because we had additional funding. And before you can issue that funding, in order to be in compliance with HUD and GLO rules, you have to issue the notice of funding so that you allow the world to know you have $30 million available, you all can come and apply to it. And then what the staff does is that they make sure that each one of these developments meets a minimum threshold level. And then they make their recommendation to me. What Tom's objection is, and I've kind of looked through everything that he submitted, what Tom's objection is, we don't see anything wrong here. There's nothing illegal here. There's nothing fraudulent here. The mayor simply did not take our, our recommendation. That's Tom's objection, that the mayor did not take his recommendation. Well, I am the mayor. It is true. And once you provide me with all of the information, unless it's an RFP. Now, if it's an RFP and it gets up to me, and if it's ranked one, two, and three, I am obligated to go with one. I can't go from one to two or to three. I have to stay with one. But this was not an RFP. This was, this was a situation for NOFA, funding available, many developers applied. Only one of those developers said from the very beginning, we will need additional gap funding, only one. And this one happens to be located in an opportunity district in District E, and where the last affordable housing was put in District E, I believe, was in 2016. And when you look at the issues that we've had with HUD over the last six years, where they have been pushing the city, and you all have written about it or reported on it, 
but they've pushed the city to place affordable housing developments in opportunity districts. That was a priority of this administration. Now, it may not have been a priority of staff, but I'm the one who has to make sure that as best as we can, that we have a very workable, productive relationship with HUD, especially right now. Especially right now, when we are relying very heavily on HUD. So yes, I said, let's move forward with placing this development in District E, which is a high opportunity district, supported very strongly by the council member, and it achieves multiple objectives. Mayor, can I ask you about that, that topic? Because one of the projects that was scrapped here to make room for Huntington was Campanile. That's also in a district, District C, that's high opportunity area. Would have done more units for uh, affordable rates than, than Huntington, and it would have done them at a fifth of the cost of the city. Except, so how do you walk through the logic of scrapping that project? In favor except, of in, except there are many projects that have been placed in District C. When you look at District C, there are many multi-family housing developments in District C. There are and less units than there are in District E, according to your administration's numbers. I'm sorry? District C, according to your administration's numbers, has the lowest amount of affordable units in the city, other than G. I, I, can, I can speak to that. I do know that we have put uh, affordable development units in District C, and we've had, even in the last year, we've had people come at uh, 2 o'clock and talk about affordable housing projects that we've placed in District C. We have not put a project in District E since, 26, since 2016. So again, you may, you may go one direction. I may go in another direction. You may say, put it in District C. I may say, we need it in District E. What is, the, what is the problem here? Can you account yeah. for the earlier question that Tom recounted of trying to get the other Huntington project in District A, which does have a high concentration of, uh, of affordable units? He pointed to that as evidence that you guys were looking to get this developer projects regardless of where they were, not just because they were in District No, District A met with some opposition, even from Council Member Peck, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. on that project. That met with a lot of opposition, and even opposition coming from your state, rep I believe the state representative in that area as well. I know, but you guys have been pushing to include that until that opposition happened, according to Tom in the memos from no. which you decided. No, I, can, I can't say that's the case, uh, Dylan. What I can say to you is that that initial project ran into opposition in, uh, by the council member as well as, if I'm not mistaken, by the state representative. And now we factor that in if they don't have a veto but it was going to make it very, it was going to make it more difficult, okay? But with respect to this particular project, what is undeniable is that it was in an opportunity district, an affordable housing project had not been put there since 2016, and it came with the full strong support of the council member. And it scored relatively high by the Texas Department of Housing and Community Development. You can't, de you can't deny that. The only objection that, Storm, that Tom gave to me, and if you look at all of his emails, was that we don't recommend it. I don't recommend it, Mayor. Well, Tom then was not a big supporter of Edison Laws either. But that project in District K has been well received by the people in Fort Bend. Neither was the staff supportive of the New Jerusalem project on the northeast side, and we moved forward. So this is not the, this is not the first or the second time where a recommendation was made, and then the administration said, no, we're going to move forward based on the administration's priorities. Mr. Mayor, I, I, sure. I think that aside from all of the arcane, at times, HUD regulations, this seems to be a very personal attack on your credibility. McCaslin called this a parade of a process. He refused to be your puppet. Um, he, he knew he would be fired and subsequently was. And, and this is a project that now involves your former law partner. Th this is very personal to you. This isn't about well, the process. It's about you. Well, no, I, I don't know what's going through t uh, Tom's head. And I'm not going to try to figure that out. Do you feel your credibility is at risk here? Every day that we operate, uh, every day 
you want to do everything you can to maintain your integrity and your credibility. And I stand by that. What I will say to you, I, try to, I, don't, I don't try to make anything personal. I don't know what's going through Tom's head. But what I can say to you without a shadow of a doubt is what he's saying to you all and the general public today. He did not say to anybody else on this team. What he said today was a surprise to every single person. And, and, Artur, and I let him speak later on. He had an opportunity to talk to, him, talk to him yesterday evening. When Tom said he's himself, he was putting forth the press statement. Tom never raised any objections about any conflict. Not one single time. Haven't you already referenced the email that he sent you Friday with, with these objections? Which objection? The only objection he made was that uh, mayor staff wants to go in one direction, you want to go to another, and the cost of the project. That's it. Nothing else. In the emails that he provided us, one to you on Friday goes through all of these explicit complaints, and you respond to this new information and order a new consideration of that. But it depends on what. At that on what point, then, I think, as I understand the timeline, on Monday you say we're going to go through that anyways, and that's when he raises. That's when he. And we did, and they did go through it. He met with the chief economic development officer. He met with the chief of staff. He met with the city legal attorney, Arturo Michelle. They were all in the same meeting. I can let them speak for themselves on that. But we did. I wanted, I wanted the team to vet every single thing that Tom said in his email on Friday. And I might add, two weeks after I made the decision that we were going forward. And based on his email on Friday, and I think if you, I'm, by, I'm sure you've seen my response to his email on Friday and then on Saturday, I wanted the team to vet everything again. And they did. And at the end of the day on yesterday, the signal was given to me, not the signal, it was given to me by the entire team, including Tom. Including Tom. When I, when I talked to Tom at the end of the day yesterday, Tom said to me, Mayor, we are moving forward and putting out the press release. I think he says he was ordered to do that. No. Uh, the, 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 the decision was made to move forward. If the decision was made to move forward, and if you're, and if you're reading Tom's statement, he said, Mayor, if you give us a signal to move forward, we are moving forward. They vet it. Everyone was in agreement. And again, I'll let Arturo and anybody invite us speak for themselves. They reported back to me at the end of the day to move forward. And that's what we move forward with. The GLO calls this in a statement just released serious allegations of fraud or corruption and says they will re-review all requests for funding draws allocated to the city of Houston uh, by, uh, by the US Department of Housing and Urban. And we welcome any and all review. We welcome in and I'll review. Well, but maybe the more operative phrase is the first one, the serious allegations of fraud and corruption. But there's no, there's facts so, imp facts so important here. What is the allegation of fraud? There are none. Even Tom said he knew of no fraud. There are no, there's no illegality. Just because you throw it off. This is someone, for whatever reason, is departing the city of Houston. And this is someone who I have stood by during some challenging times in dealing with GLO, when GLO would not even talk to Tom. GLO has refused to talk to Tom for some, quite some time. So that is what is disturbing here. I don't know what's going on here. It is puzzling, as I indicated even in my email to him, it's puzzling even today. If you have any objections, if you have any objections, then why not raise them when you have an opportunity to raise your objections. In addition to just sending an email out on Friday at 6.27 p.m. on a Friday. And that's why, and I take every statement concern seriously. I did not say to Tom on Friday after he sent the email, we're going forward, we're just gonna go forward. What I said to Tom, is that we will revet this one more time with the team, okay? And mind you, he didn't send it to the team, he just sent it to me. Every time we meet on these projects, it's never a one-on-one -on -one with Tom. 
I have no meetings that are one-on-one. -on -one. Every time we discuss these affordable housing projects or any other housing project, it is with a team. Never one-on-one, -on -one. never. So when Tom brought these, uh, when, uh, the, 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 the pattern is, every single time you bring something to me, you bring it to the team. And there's Andy Eakin in the team, there's Marblet Hunter. Uh, in case, some cases, there's City Legal, and then it's myself. You bring the team. It's not never one-on-one. -on -one. And even after raising his concerns, because I take whatever concerns you raise uh, very carefully, I ask that this matter be vetted again. And I wasn't even present, okay? Because as you know, I was dealing with something else on yesterday, okay? So I was not even there. And at the end of the day, the team came back to me, including Tom, and said, we're moving forward, issuing the press release. So I don't know what's going on in this life. What I will tell you is at this point, uh, after standing by Tom, and providing him with as much support, all the support that I thought he needed in order to run his department in the best interest of the city of Houston. It is quite apparent at this point that he is not, um, in, he's not the best person to move forward. I have lost confidence in him. But I am also the very same person who has stood by him more than anyone else in this city and offered him everything he needs. I have no question with anybody uh, vetting, uh, scrutinizing any of these deals. I'm fine. I'm fine with that. And this will be the last question. I'm fine with that. Can I, can yes, I just yeah. quickly revisit uh, the Barry Barnes inclusion? You know, you mentioned 0.01%. I think it's 10%. My understanding, you know, so we're Whatever. Just, it's whatever it is. No one has brought that to me. Do you think that your former or your longtime law partner should be benefiting from city I have not been affiliated with that, with that, uh, with the partnership in six years. I have no pecuniary interest at all, no affiliation at all. Well, I'm not saying you. I'm saying, do you think your long-term law I, partner should be benefiting? There's no, there's no reason why he should excuse himself. There's no reason. There's no conflict. And let me add. Appearance, man. But, but let me. But, but that has not. That's not even a part of the equation. No one. I did not know until you, until you somebody brought it to me today. That was never raised by anyone. It'd be different, for example, if Tom had said, brought this to me and said, Mayor, you should be aware, what do you think about this? It was never, it's, that is not an issue. It, was ne it has never been an issue. It didn't come up. So you can't make something that's an issue when it was never an issue. That was never in factored in into Tom's analysis or his reason why this project shouldn't go forward. It's not included in any email or conversation. He had every opportunity, if that, if that was a concern, to bring it up yesterday, even when I was not at the meeting. No one has ever presented it to me, none. What was the driving force here is that I know when we have, when we are needing to work very closely and in a positive, productive way with HUD, that it is important to have these affordable housing projects throughout the city of Houston, in districts, opportunity districts. That is important so that we don't bump up against HUD or the VCA that we entered into a few years ago. And this was an opportunity to place an affordable housing development in an opportunity district, in District E, and the last one that was placed there was 2016. And at the same time, it's not just this one, but providing additional funding to New Hope Housing as well. And we have utilized them, worked with them several times. And to the extent there's additional funding that come, becomes available, we'll, look at, we'll take a look at the additional developments as well. What is the conflict there? What's the problem? So it's no fraud, it's no illegality, there's nothing wrong here. The only criticism that Tom is making is that I didn't go with his choice. Considering a whistleblower? You gotta, it's gotta be something to, uh, to, to blow a, a whistle against. Do you think that 
Do you still have confidence in the remaining leadership at that department? Will you ask for any resignations? Will you do any more firing we're gonna, there? We're gonna, we're gonna move, we're gonna move forward. I, I can't speak uh, uh, to, to why Tom said what he said, puzzling, but I leave that up to him. The reality is, it's like in any situation, this is a big organization, and we're, and we're, gonna, we're gonna move forward. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Thank thanks, you. appreciate it. Um, uh, good afternoon. Uh, one thing that I wanted to point out is the email that you've talked about that came in this weekend or Friday that was sent to the mayor, that the mayor sent back to the director, to the city attorney, to the head of economic development, chief of staff. We were asked to follow up on what was in the email and the allegations. What the director said to me, both speaking and in writing, lawyer to lawyer, is that he did not see any legal issues in this matter at all. That what he saw here was an issue of business judgment. And that issue is the one the mayor alluded to a moment ago. That whether you can put more generally in the city or whether there are certain areas that have not had affordable housing that the federal government required the city to enter into a voluntary compliance agreement to address a few years back. So that is the business judgment and that policy decision falls at the feet, not of the lawyers, not of the directors of any departments. You're not going to have a bureaucrat making these decisions. It's gonna be our elected officials, as it is with all local, state, and federal government that we have. We were really saying, can we say it? If, if, if Tom, in fact, put it right into you that there was no legal issue, maybe we could see that. Uh, I, I'm, certainly can release you know the, the portion that has that communication you know there may be some uh, it may be a string that has some confidential information but i can release that i understand the legal distinction you're making about you know sort of criminality but can't something be wrong without it being criminal in other words if he's well, suggesting that you steer the contract well you... mr oberg talked about the the appearance and had there been there would have been further review had there been some communication of even an appearance or some allegation of impropriety, but that was never raised. In meetings or discussions or emails with you, did he bring up this issue of scoring about the, the project that ultimately won the, the, the housing staff did not think highly of? It was clear that he, that he was communicating the housing staff disagreed with the decision. They thought the dollar should go elsewhere. And the effect of that scoring was that there may need to be more city funds. But the full policy decision takes into account the location throughout the city, which has been the, the review, the microscope we've been under by the federal government. Thank you. 